thanks so much for inviting me uh, to talk about this work. I know I've recently presented this at the Odyssey Symposium, so I decided to chair pick a few slides to recap, and then I'm actually going to uh, present some new slides after that. All right. So the title of the talk is Generating Synthetic Electronic Health Records in OMAP Using GPT. So why is the synthetic data important? Well, the issue is that we can share the private patient data with external, if external collaborators. Uh, therefore, having uh, good synthetic data that mirrors the source will certainly enable certain EHR research areas, such as external validation of machine learning models or potentially debiasing the source data and so on and so forth. The common approach for generating the synthetic data is as follows, where the longitudinal EHR data is converted to a data matrix using the bag of word approach, essentially by counting the number of features in the time window. Then the GAN model is trained to generate a similar data matrix. Although this uh, approach works really well, the underlying data structure uh, for this uh, framework um, doesn't capture any temporal dependencies, therefore limiting its use. Due to recent advancements in deep learning, people started operating directly on the longitudinal EHR data using a combination of sequence models and GANs. Um, although such methods seem to retain some portion of, uh, portion of the patient timeline, it is still you know, limited in that all the visits are assumed to end on the same day as the visit starts which is not true for inpatient visits. There's no visit type. There's no discharge type in the patient sequence. In addition, the synthetic data is not ready for dissemination or consumption. So we think this problem should be tackled from a different angle. Instead of focusing on fancy model architectures, we fo focus on data. We created a patient representation that not only retains the patient timeline, but also captures uh, the essential visit information. It's designed to have the demographic prompt at the beginning and followed by a set of visits to, uh, to describe the patient history. In the demographic prompts, we have tokens, uh, a few tokens, year at first visit, age at first visit, and gender and race. And this marks the starting point of the patient journey. In each visit block, uh, it contains a visit type and followed by the medical concepts associated with this visit, and they are ordered chronologically. The key innovation here is the use of artificial time tokens or ATT to represent the time intervals in days between visits and also within the inpatient visit span to preserve the patient duration. Because uh, this representation preserves all the important information, I like to think of this as a messenger to help transfer information be between different common data models. Right now, we only support the OMAP formats, but in the future, we can even you know, plug in different other common data models such as I2B2. Based on this idea, we proposed the synthetic data framework where we first convert OMAP to patient sequences using the patient representation. And then we train a generative model or GPT in this case to learn the sequence distribution and generate new data. Next, we convert the patient sequences back to OMAP formats using the OMAP converter. Finally, we evaluate the quality of the synthetic OMAP using Odyssey tools and philosophies. All right, so I'm actually going to skip the modeling part and generation part. So I just focus on the, you know, the remaining part of the talk. So let's just pretend we have the synthetic data now. So how do we actually measure the similarity of the synthetic data and source OMAP instances? How do we do that? We came up with the evaluation procedure where the synthetic data is evaluated on three different levels. On level one, we compare the concept distributions between source and synthetic data. And on level two, we investigated the co-occurrence relations within the synthetic data. And on level three, we ran logistic regression on the synthetic cohorts that were generated from the synthetic OMAP. So um, the, all the evaluation results indicated that the synthetic data actually captured the underlying characteristics uh, of the source, which means it was pretty good. All right. So I'm going to talk about the new stuff now. Um, so I made the claim that patient representation retained the patient timeline. Although this makes intuitive sense based on the, you know, the visual or the diagram I showed earlier, how do we actually know? How do we actually measure it? To do this, we conceived a new metric, which we call loss of temporal information or LOTI, uh, to describe the, the shrinkage in the patient timeline. In this equation, T represents the time interval 
and F is the function that generates the ATT token using the time interval, and G is the in inverse function of F. So essentially, this term represents the reconstructed time interval. So what Lottie measures is the expected difference between the time interval and reconstructed time interval due to the use of patient representation. We applied this idea to a set of patient representations that we experimented in this project. So the top one is the proposed representation that preserves the most temporal information. And the bottom one, GPT vanilla, preserves zero temporary, inf temporary information. This one is actually used a lot in a lot of deep, uh, deep learning models, such as uh, MedBird. And the ones in the middle retain some portion of the patient timeline. From top to bottom, as the arrows indicate, there is a consistent loss or shrinking in the patient timeline. So what I'm showing here is the, uh, the logic for constructing the artificial time tokens or ATG tokens for the corresponding patient representations from the previous slides. So based on the construction logic, we calculated the uh, corresponding law T in the, in the last column. So as you can see, uh, the proposed representation in the first row has the smallest law T as expected. The second one, GPT inpatient, has a slightly higher law T due to the exclusion of the inpatient duration. Uh, in contrast, Sherbert has a relatively higher loyalty because we used a set of ATT tokens that are less granular than the day tokens. Therefore, there's a lot of temporary information there. And finally, for GPT vanilla, uh, the entire patient timeline is collapsed into a single point, which is why the corresponding loyalty is super large. I think I lied a little bit earlier because I uh, I said that our patient representation had zero loss of temporary information. It's not entirely true according to this table. Uh, that's because for the time intervals beyond three years, uh, we decided to use a single LT or long-term token to represent time intervals. Uh, the reason is that the frequency of time intervals beyond three years is so low and GPT would not learn so well in that region, which is why we aggregated all the time intervals into a single LT token. So one potential application I find very exciting about its work is uh, time-sensitive forecasting through Monte Carlo sampling. Um, so the idea is that we are going to prompt this trained GPT model using a patient history to generate a sample of time, uh, time tokens. Then we can take the expectation of that to predict the time interval to the next visit, represented by the expectation of the delta t. Then we're going to prompt the GPT model again using the patient history, expected time interval to predict the most likely visit type. Going back to the model again, prompt it using the patient history, time interval, and most likely visits to predict the most likely concepts associated with this visit. So the cool thing is that not only we can predict the medical concepts in the future, but also we can predict when the next visit will occur, which is really cool. I don't think anybody has, maybe some people have done it, but I think this is pretty, pretty cool, pretty new. Okay, just to conclude, and uh, this is the first deep learning framework that generates uh, longitudinal synthetic data using OMAP common data model. And we designed a uh, innovative patient representation that allows us to reconstruct the patient timeline without almost without loss of temporary information. Uh, the evaluation procedure also showed that the synthetic data indeed preserved the underlying characteristics of the real population. I'd like to thank my team and also the collaborators for your help and your suggestions. And I'd like to take any questions uh, if time allows. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Charles, so much. Um, allow time for people to raise hands. There is one here on the chat. Uh, is there a, a code repo available on GitHub or elsewhere for this project? Uh, not really. Uh, we are still working on the manuscript, and then we're going to put it on pre prints uh, on archive very soon, and we are planning to release the code soon. So it's going to be available. I'll let everybody know on Odyssey uh, forum. Great, Joe. Thank you. Good, and good luck with the manuscript. Uh, I Thank saw you. a hand go up, and then I saw it go down. I didn't catch the name quickly enough. Um, but we do have 10 minutes here, so I mean, we don't have to stretch everything, but we do have time. So if people have Mark. There's another question. There's another question from Mukesh in the in the chat. OK, uh, uh, Chow, have you, have you explored open AI's chat GPT for synthetic data generation? Uh, we have not because um, the data. So we are kind of dealing with different data for open AI. It is 
text data. This is structured EHR data, so it's slightly different, but that is not to say we can't leverage it. Probably we can, you know, so it's a good experiment. I think we can, we should just fine tune it using the patient histories. Well, but there's a, a lot of privacy concerns. I don't think we can send our data to uh, open AI, but if we happen to have a local model, like say Llama 2 or something, so we can test this out, uh, test this out. I think that's a good experiment. Thanks for the suggestion. All right. Have you tried to run a network study using the synthetic data? Uh, that would be a great dream situation to have. Um, yeah, so yeah, I mean, of course, if we can, I mean, if anybody is interested in participating in such a study, I would be happy to share the code and so we can, but you, you of course you have to train the model and generate the synthetic data yourself. Uh, obviously, um, well, there is a hope, uh, just on that note, there's a hope that we can release the synthetic data <laughs> some points in the future, but of course there are a lot of data privacy issues we have to address before we do that. Um, yeah, so, but, but you know, that's my hope. I'm working towards that goal. I give one more shot here. Any other questions or thoughts? Uh, this is Andrew um, Chow. Great work. I'm going to connect you to Ken Gersing uh, at NCAT, who I think is interested in some synthetic gen uh, data generation um, processes for participants, not only in N3C, but the new spinoffs of, of N3C for other disease areas. I'm also interested in running the same code that you ran. We did similar sorts of things, but not identical when we had a transformer-based synthetic version of our own uh, Tufts Research Data Warehouse created in partnership with a company that's since gone out of business called Syntegra. Um, okay. But it would be fun. I know a fair amount about what their what their process was. It's similar, but probably not identical. And it would be intriguing to start to build up a repository of different transformer-based approaches of synthetic data and understand their performance in the in a common set of metrics the way that you've defined i thought it was a really uh, cool and logical and uh and convincing set of metrics that you all chose um, as i said we did something similar it's not uh quite as good especially for the low t uh, aspect of what you did and so um if that's of interest i would love to run sure. those same metrics against the the original and synthetic versions of our own data and and uh, in general collaborate on what you're doing but I'll I'll be connecting you with Ken soon so congratulations oh, thank Great you work. so much thank you so much this is really exciting thank you I appreciate it